Most of this information comes from publication 946, How to Depreciate Property Tax Year 2022. You can find it on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Looking at the income tax formula, we're focused on line one income. Remember, in the first half of the income tax formula is in essence an income statement, although just an outline of scaffolding other forms and schedules flowing into these line items. One of those the schedule c having business income minus business income minus business expenses gets us to the net business income that rolls into line one income of our income tax formula first page of the form 1040 remember in the schedule c rolls into the schedule one which rolls into page one of form 1040 line number eight we're looking at the Schedule C, profit or loss from business, noting the income statement format with the income and expense categories. We're focused now on the expense categories, more specifically the depreciation, more specifically still the 179 uh, type of deduction. So quick recap, remember that when you have property, then you might have to put it on the books deviating from a cash based system to an accrual based system in essence as an asset allocating the cost over the useful life a common accrual type of concept and in general what we would like to do as taxpayers is get the deductions as soon as possible although there could be exceptions to that rule for the tax code and depreciation they might have a, a accelerated depreciation method instead of straight line, which is usually getting us a deduction sooner, which is usually good. And then if we can get a 179 deduction, in essence, deducting as much as we can in the first year, that's usually a benefit as well. We might have a special uh, deduction as well, special depreciation we'll talk about in future presentations. All right, that said, we're focusing in once again on the 179 deduction just as a recap electing the 179 deduction introduction you can elect to recover all or part of the cost of certain qualifying property up to a limit by deducting it in the year you place the property in service this is a section 179 deduction you can elect the 179 deduction instead of recovering the cost by taking depreciation deduction which would be a benefit if we can get the benefit in the current year. We're continuing on now. This is the third part of our 179 uh, deduction discussion. We're now taking a look at the limitations on the amount that you might be able to deduct for the 179 deduction. We looked at dollar limitations in prior presentations. Now we're looking at the business income limit. The total cost you can deduct each year after you apply the dollar limit is limited to the taxable income from the active conduct of any trade or business during the year. Generally, you are considered to actively conduct a trade or business if you meaningfully participate in the management or operations of the trade or business. So the prime example of that would be reporting, say, on a Schedule C generally. Remember, when we're thinking about different kinds of incomes, it's kind of a good idea to have a general categorization of different kinds of income. The most common often being, say, what I would call W-2 income that you are receiving as an employee from an employer. One of the distinguishing factors that might help you to kind of categorize the different types of income in your mind is to think about how the FICA taxes are being paid. That's the Social Security and Medicare, for example. As an employee, they're gonna be the payroll taxes, so they're gonna be withholdings uh, in that type of situation. As an employee, you typically don't have as many of the business expenses that you're able to be taking because the employer then is the one that is going to be responsible for most of those types of expenses. Although as an employee, you are of course doing active work uh, in that situation. The situation. And then you have a, ske a Schedule C situation where you're actively participating in say your own type of business. And in that situation, the social security and Medicare is being paid in the form of self-employment tax, which would be an indication oftentimes that it's a, a, a business kind of activity. And then you have activities that might be more passive in nature, such as investing in stocks and bonds, where you might have interest in dividends, and those are not subject to any form of Social Security FICA taxes. 
not in terms of withholdings usually, and not in terms of self-employment taxes. And then the other kind of passive-ish kind of situation is where you have real estate property on the Schedule E. And there's a question there, uh, whether or not some, some of those businesses are active or not, or passive in nature. Uh, so those are the general categories. Okay, and then and that could lend to some of these limitations uh, as well. So uh, any cost not deductible in one year under section 179 because of this limit can be carried to the next year. So clearly if you're, if you're limited to the 179 deduction, then you would expect possibly that in the following years, you might be able to take the normal depreciation. So you don't like lose the capacity for the deduction. You were just limited due to the income limitation. And now it wouldn't really be called a carry forward, but you, but you do have kind of a carry forward situation with the basis that still has the capacity for deduction that you would deduct under normal rules, such as for example, maker's deduction in the future. So special rules apply to the deduction of qualified section 179 real property that is placed in service by you in tax years beginning before 2016 and disallowed because of the business income limit. See special rules for qualified section 179 real property under carryover of disallowed deduction later. All right, taxable income, what is it? In general, figure taxable income for this purpose by totaling the net income and losses from all trades and businesses you actively conducted during the year. Net income or loss from a trade or business includes the following. You got section 1231 gains or losses, interest from working capital or, or your trade or business, and wages, salaries, tips, or other pay earned as an employee. Now, remember, just as a general rule, the, the IRS is, of course, skeptical on losses. The IRS wants to be your silent partner. They want to have the benefit of taking a piece of the income, that, but they don't want to have to take on the risk of the losses, right? So losses are going to be, could be a benefit with regards to, to taxes. So just as a general rule, you would think that you, you want to always be thinking, well, are, there might be limitations if this you know, cuts into a loss situation for many areas in the tax code. So in addition, figuring taxable income without regard to any of the following. So the section 179 deduction. Bro, my tax deductions are crying. So the self-employment tax deduction, any net operating loss carry bought back or carry over, any unreimbursed employee business expenses, two different taxable income limits. In addition to the business income limit for section 179 deduction, you may have a taxable income limit for some other deduction. You may have to figure the limit for this other deduction, taking into account the section 179 deduction. If so, complete the following steps. So in other words, now you've got this income limitation with regards to this one deduction. They apply the same principle sometimes to other deductions, which also might be subject to an income limitation. So now the question is, well, how are you gonna figure out which deduction is gonna be limited in which order with the, these two deductions or multiple deductions that have these income limitations? Okay, so one, uh, figure taxable income without the section 179 deduction or the other deduction. Two, figure a hypothetical section 179 deduction using the taxable income figure in step one. Three, subtract the hypothetical section 179 deduction figured in step two from the taxable income figured in step one. Four, figure a hypothetical amount for the other deduction using the amount figured in step three as taxable income. Notice that this is a complex series of steps here. You can see conceptually why this problem happens, but running through these calculations can be quite tedious. Software hopefully can help us run through those calculations and then we might be able to unpack or deconstruct using the software and applying these concepts. Five, 